Hey everyone, it's AJ Stockwell back with another QuickBooks tutorial. And this is gonna be a little bit quicker of a video than my last couple. And in this video, I want to explain the concept of unapplied cash payment income. A lot of business owners see this on their P&L and don't understand what it is or why QuickBooks is creating it. So I wanted to create a video explaining it. If these videos are helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you're looking for a more cohesive, complete QuickBooks Online training course, I hope that you'll check mine out from the link in the description below. So in QuickBooks, first what I'm going to do is go to our balance sheet. And this is because I want to just quickly talk about the concept of cash versus accrual accounting. So I'm not going to cover that topic in detail in this video, but a main difference between cash and accrual accounting is the treatment of accounts receivable. So in cash accounting, we don't recognize income or have accounts receivable based on an invoice because cash accounting, like it sounds, is purely focused on cash. Cash in and cash out. When we create an invoice, it is not income for us yet from a cash perspective because we haven't actually received the cash. On the other hand, when we're talking about accrual accounting, we can accrue income even without receiving the cash. And the way that we do this is by creating invoices, which creates accounts receivable. So by default, this QuickBooks account is set up to look at accrual accounting. Sometimes balance sheets and P&Ls will run by default on a cash basis if that's how the business is set up in QuickBooks. So when I'm looking at this accrual basis balance sheet, you see that I have accounts receivable here and that's for invoices that I've created for past videos. If I switch to cash accounting, then you'll see that we do not have accounts receivable because accounts receivable is not a cash basis concept. It just kind of doesn't exist. What does this have to do with the concept of unapplied cash payment income in QuickBooks? Well, let's talk about what happens when we receive a customer payment in QuickBooks. So I'll go to new transaction and then I will just go to receive payment and choose a customer. And this customer does not have any open invoices, right? So let's say that they've paid me $500. I'm recording it as just a customer payment here, not as a sales receipt, and I don't have an invoice to apply it against. It's telling me that right here. And what I can go ahead and do is save and close this, and it's prompting me to acknowledge that I'm saving it as a credit. So what is the effect usually of using that receive payment type of transaction. Going back to the idea of double entry accounting, every transaction touches at least two accounts. In the case of receiving a payment, I'll go back in there. One of the accounts is whichever account we are depositing that payment to, whether it's our actual checking account or if it's going into undeposited funds first. And then the other side of that transaction is accounts receivable because usually we're closing out an invoice or some portion of an invoice. So receiving a payment is basically always reducing a customer's accounts receivable balance. So I'm gonna close out of here and I'm gonna to switch to the accrual basis balance sheet again. And what we see if we click into here is we have our payment. And you can see that this is the only transaction for this customer. And when we reduce accounts receivable, what we're basically doing is creating a credit balance for the customer that can be applied later. So if I go over to the customer's page, I'll click in, you see that she has this $500 credit balance or negative balance. Similarly, if I jump quickly to the AR aging, we see this $500 credit balance. And again, this is an accrual concept. So if accounts receivable is not a concept on the cash basis financial statements, QuickBooks needs a different account to offset receiving that payment. So let's go to the P&L. And right now, again, it's pulling it up as accrual by default. And we don't see that $500 payment anywhere here because all that was doing from an accrual basis was affecting the balance sheet, right? It was a reduction of 
accounts receivable. It was creating a credit balance for this customer. But if I switch it to a cash basis, then we see unapplied cash payment income. Because on a cash basis, when we receive cash from a customer, it is income. The problem is QuickBooks doesn't know sort of what products and services this was for, so it's not able to map it to a different sales account. So I can go ahead and click in here, and here is that payment. So the summary here, the TLDR, is that when we create a receive payment type of transaction from a customer, normally from an accrual basis, it's reducing their accounts receivable, but on a cash basis, there's no real such thing as a customer credit balance. There's no AR, so we post it directly to the P&L, and when QuickBooks doesn't know what products or services it was for, and it's not applied to an invoice, hence the name, it gets posted to this unapplied cash payment income. Now, the second situation that I wanna show for people here is for those of you out there who are saying, well, I always have an invoice that goes with my payments. I don't have any open credit balances for customers, but for some reason, when I look at my cash basis p and I see this unapplied cash payment income. Why is that? Well, the most likely reason is and this is a bit of a spoiler because I'm just jumping right to the end, but the invoice is probably dated after the payment. So let me show you an example of that. I'm going to go create a new invoice for this customer. And we'll just do this accounting services for the same amount as the original payment. But I'm gonna change the date uh, to sometime here in March, because this will really illustrate it well. And now I'll go ahead and save and close. Now, if I go back to my P&L, and I look at it this way, so looking at both February and March, and then I'll look at it on a monthly basis, you see here that we now have this unapplied cash payment income of $500 in February, it then gets reduced in March when that invoice comes through, and so the total is zero. So if I'm looking at this on just a total basis, it's gonna look kind of weird because there's this zero dollar amount, but remember in QuickBooks, if you're seeing a zero dollar line item like this, it usually means that there's some underlying activity in there. And if I click in here, sure enough, we see both our payment and our invoice. But because the payment came first, QuickBooks is posting it to unapplied cash payment income. The other thing to note is the fact that QuickBooks sort of seems to be recognizing that these go together, right? Because it's actually posting this invoice here. And the reason for that is because we have the setting turned on. So if I go to the gear menu and account and settings, and then within the advanced settings, I have the setting to automatically apply credits. So what that means, if I close out of here, and then if I open up that payment transaction, you can see that QuickBooks actually automatically applied this payment, which was dated for the month before, to this invoice. So I'll close out of here, go back to the report, and then if I click into our regular sales line item, I see that invoice here as well. So it's sort of interesting because QuickBooks is debiting and crediting several different accounts for this because we are still, you know, getting this posted properly into the sales account, but now it is also reducing that unapplied cash payment income because it has now been applied. So it's a little bit funky. I can look at this on a monthly basis again, and you see that you know, the amount effectively stays this total 800 because QuickBooks is posting the 500 here and then taking it back out of unapplied cash payment income. But I hope that this explains that issue. Uh, it's important to note that it will happen even if, you know, you're just a day off. So let me open up this invoice again and set the date to 216. And now it's a little bit more sneaky because I put it in the two months at first on purpose so that I could show it side by side. But now you see we just have this zero dollar 
line and if we click in there, it's because the invoice is coming after the payment. So I hope this helps clear up what unapplied cash payment income is and why you might be seeing it on your cash basis P&L. Again, if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and if you have any video topic ideas for me. Thank you.